let's visit a Ukrainian home. We will look at Ukrainian traditional household items like Kumenets, Makitra, Makogon and Petrikivka paintings, along with a Ukrainian grandmother and her dog Brovko and cat Murka. The main story is illustrated and detailed by Alena Tarasova, based in Mykolaiv, Ukraine. And I am Viktoria Romanishina from Kherson, Ukraine, here to tell you about my beautiful Ukraine. There are lived a dame with her dog and a cat in her old Ukrainian house. The cat was mild and loved. The dog was charming, naughty and very talented. In this series, there are 12 main videos. We use the time-lapse of the creation process to tell you about Ukraine. We also have several sub-series. One of them is Petrikivka paintings illustrating different berries of Ukraine. This time it is mountain ash. You see the painting framed on our wall. Each video will have a different berry Petrikivka painting. The time-lapse video, the main art and the Petrikivka painting are Alena's creation. We also have collections of drawings of flowers of Ukraine, animals of Ukraine and so forth. The flower for today is hollyhock, which is in the glass vase on the coffee table. The flowers including the vase is digitally drawn line by line by Dunja Dayanovi from Serbia. Please applaud her ability to show the transparency of the flowers. My grandmother used to use hollyhock in decorating food. Do you know that a hollyhock is completely edible? Roots, leaves and blossom. Grandma used to use it as a medicine too. Sometimes cats or dogs can be allergic to its steam, but likely Brovko and Murka we are not. Brovko and Murka are the most common names for dogs and cats in Ukraine. Today's guest artist is from Zemun, Serbia, and she is depicting her impression of Kyiv at night. Kyiv is the capital of Ukraine. A comprehensive collection of the whole story with tons of original art is available as a flip book for anyone who wants to enjoy Ukraine. Similar collections are available as videos and flip book for many other countries. Needed information is in the description. This is the story that all of you might already know as Old Mother Hubbard and her dog. The original story is said to have been set in England and was one of the most popular publications of the 19th century. We are turning it around and make it a Ukrainian story. For today, it is Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her poor dog a bone. But when she came there, the cupboard was bare and so the poor dog had none. Old Grandma's Ukrainian house is a special place. When you return to it, you feel young again, no matter how old you are. Comfort and warm memories surround you as soon as you cross the threshold of grandparents' house. The smell of childhood hits me, and stories that happened to me there in my Ukrainian village appear in my mind. You are hearing an Ukrainian artist playing sopilka. It is a woodwind instrument of the flute family used by Ukrainian folk instrumentalists. It is traditionally made of wood and has 6 to 10 finger holes. Their size is very based on whether it is bass, alto, tenno, soprano or sopranino. Bass and sopranino have the largest holes and most people's fingers will not cover the holes. To make a good sopilka, the maker would say I have to find the right branch. When my grandmother was young, she had wealth and big family. But time passed, children grew up, grandchildren were born, children moved to big cities where they saw more opportunities for development. Grandfather passed away first and left grandmother alone. Her favorite dog Brovko and Kitty Murka made her cheerful company. As I mentioned, these are the most popular names for dogs and cats in Ukrainian villages. I am one of those grandchildren who moved to the city. Ukrainian cities are like cities everywhere. Everyone rushes to work. The roads are full of cars. There is noise and non-stop traffic. 
In Ukrainian, a cottage is хата. It is starts with X, but it sounds H. Say it with me. Хата. Wonderful. Хата it is. Rural Ukrainian kitchen is a place where there is always forms with hearty smells of fresh baked goods and steamed milk. As a child, my favorite treat was bagel with jam made from roses and fresh warm milk. Rose jam has a winter spin because most Ukrainian women believe that jam from roses petals tastes best in pampuhi at Christmas. Pampuhi is a Ukrainian Christmas dish. It is deep fried dot buns with various sweet fillings in the middle. In an old Ukrainian house, you can often find unique household items, one of which is a loom. Grandmother wove carpets, clothes, towels and everything she needed for her home. She always has carpets underfoot and on the walls, which adds cuddliness and beauty. She still waves them for us for our birthday and festivals. They are much treasured by me, as all else is factionary made in our lives. An artist has digitally drawn a collection of Ukrainian rugs, which will be shown in a future video. In the city, I can't imagine my life without a washing machine. Hand wash? The thought causes my anxiety and sweat stands out on my forehead. But in their use, my grandmother with my great-grandmother had obviously no electricity, no powders with the smell of alpine meadows or ocean breezes and no convenient centrifuge that dries clothes. There was a huge vessel hollowed out of a tree trunk. Clothes were ashed. Hot water was poured into the barrel, a heated stone was placed and ashes were added instead of detergent. Then they took it to the river to rinse. In the warm period of the year, the clothes were dried outside in the cherry orchard near the house. Clothes soaked in the smell of uh, freshness. Now we are trying to recreate the feel taught factory products, right? Have to say life is much easier now, Todd. Jugs are a mandatory household item in a Ukrainian house. Ukrainians are very proud of their kumanets. This is a clay jug in the shape of an O. Various drinks are stored in it, which, thanks to the shape and material, keep a stable temperature for a long time. The drink acquires an interesting taste and even wear. You can verify this in practice because the kumanets are made by potters all over Ukraine even now. Of course, I have one too in my city apartments. Another fixture of my grandmother's kitchen was makitra and makogon. Grandma used makogon and makitra to mash everything. Grandfather helped because physical strength is needed here. Puppy seeds, grain, nuts or even animal feet were ground. People like me with uh, our home food processors and blenders are often called city child or balcony person. The appearance of Ukrainian woman has always been famous for its naturalness. My grandmother had long hair all her life, which she braided every day. The braid remains with her even now. Only the color changed from black to gray. In an Ukrainian house, the bench was a place of rest. When I was a child, my grandmother would hold me on her lap and sit on the bench and she would tell me Ukrainian poems. One of the favorite and most famous Ukrainian poems is Taras Shevchenko's work Tastements. Серед степу широкого на в країні милі, що блани широкополі і Дніпро і кручі, було видно, було чути, як реве ревучі. Now my grandma says she reads the poem to Brovko and Murka. No one dreams of a lonely old age. So take care and visit your loved ones more often. 
Please follow us on this trip to hear more about the many aspects of Ukraine and its people. Let me also leave you with two new words in Ukraine to say welcome and goodbye. Welcome in Ukrainian is Laskavo prosimo. Again, Laskavo prosimo. And goodbye is do pobachenia. Till next time, please check out the other videos about other countries too. Do pobachenia. Let's visit a Ukrainian home. In this video, we will talk about Ukrainian breads and our tradition around bread. As usual, we have our Petrikivka painting already framed on the wall. I cannot wait to show you the illustration by our guest artist for today. She has drawn the most pictured building in Ukraine. So come with me. The main story is illustrated in detail by Alena Tarasova, based in Mykolaiv, Ukraine. And I am Victoria Romanishina, Kherson, Ukraine, here to tell you about my beautiful Ukraine. There are lived today with her dog and a cat in her old Ukrainian house. The cat was mild and loved, the dog was charming, naughty and very talented. This series is called Cultural Appreciation Series. In this series, we have 12 videos illustrating the main story. Meanwhile, in each video, we will have several sub-series and guest artists. You see the Petrikivka painting framed on the wall. It features a different berry each video. The berry for this video is blueberry. Blueberry is Chornitsa in Ukrainian. Ukraine is eighth largest producer of blueberries in the world. You should try Ukrainian blueberry dumpling Vareniki, perfect for breakfast or dessert. I serve it with sour cream. My grandma had some very well yielding blueberry bushes. They are upright bushes with a relatively shallow, fibrous root system and woody canes. Fruit, it is born on woods formed during the previous grooving season in late summer. The flower for today is magnolia. When magnolia flowers bloom in Ukraine, we all make it a point to visit them. The magnolia family is one of the oldest trees in existence. It was named by a botanist. Guess what his name was Pierre Magnol. The magnolia and the vase were drawn by Dunya Dayanovi from Serbia. If I don't say that you won't believe that it is an image of the picture drawn that we added as a decoration to the room. The flower stands for perseverance, endurance and fortitude, which all of us need much right now. Our guest artist is a fellow Ukrainian Darina Bogdan from Volin, town of Kovel, who has drawn for us the beautiful bell tower of Kyiv. As I mentioned it already, it is the most pictured building of Kyiv. It is called Velika Lavrska Dzvinnitsa in Ukrainian and is the main bell tower of the ancient cave monastery of Kyiv Pechersk Lavra in Kyiv. The monastery has been a prominent center of Eastern Orthodox Christianity. We will talk about it again later in the video. High resolution images of all this work is available in the flipbook. Here we are starting to see the second picture of the series. This is the story of old mother Hubbard and her dog. The original story is said to have been set in England and was one of the most popular publications of the 19th century. In this series we have turned it around and made it a Ukrainian story. In the first picture, you were introduced you to Ukrainian grandmother Hubbard, her dog Brovko and cat Murka. We saw that mother Hubbard's cupboard was empty, so the dog Brovko gold no bones. So today's section of the uh, rhyme goes. She went to bakers to buy him some bread, but when she came back, the poor dog was dead. 
Oh no, the story took a sad turn? Don't fret too much, just remember that the dog is naughty. Did you hear the grandmother went to the bakers? Bread for all heads. This is what Ukrainian families have said since ancient times. This expression still prevails in traditional Ukrainian families. In Ukraine, bread has long been a symbol of hospitality and well-being. For many centuries, the Ukrainian people treated it as something sacred. My grandmother always taught me that bread should be respected and it has a soul. Often in Ukrainian families, guests are greeted with bread and salt. The traditional hands survived from the time of my grandmother's use until today. Grandmother and grandfather never threw away crumbs and fragments of bread but gave them to their poultry or cattle. It was considered a sin not to eat a piece and if such a piece fell to the ground, it was appropriate to pick it up, clean it from dust, kiss it and finish it. I still remember that bread cannot be thrown away. If it is stale, I give it to the birds. My grandmother taught my mother, and my mother taught me that when baking bread, you should not quarrel at home, otherwise the bread will not rise. Homemade bread is special. It smells of comfort. You cannot buy this in a store for all the money in the world. I would say even world-famous baguettes cannot compare with homemade Ukrainian bread. I have never baked bread myself. Everything is simple for me. I go to the store and buy it. But this is not the same bread as in my childhood. Grandma always baked bread by herself in the oven. It was a long and difficult process. The secret of delicious bread is the sourdough, which I had to infuse and ferment. Grandmother said that the round shape of bread is connected with the fact that even our ancestors compared bread to the sun. In Ukraine they say, you cannot get bored of bread, even the tastiest delicious red fish or caviar but never bread. Even today, bread must be present on every Ukrainian table. Now though there is a huge range of dishes for every taste. But in Ukraine, many dishes are still eaten with bread. In Ukraine, special bread is baked for certain holidays. Wedding bread is called karovai. This incredibly beautiful bread is a symbol of the union of two families. This tradition prevails at Ukrainian wedding that when the bride and groom enter the festive hall, their parents meet them with bread and salt on a Ukrainian embroidered towel. This is a symbol of parents blessing the new livets and wishing well-being to the newly created family. On Easter, Ukrainians bake Pascha. This is a sweet Easter bread with candied fruit, raisins or nuts, decorated with chocolate or icing. We have kept both of these breads with a bread bowl of borscht, Ukrainian national dish for you on the coffee table. Ukrainian borscht is made with red beetroots as one of the main ingredients which give the dish its distinctive red color. It is a hearty soup of beef and a variety of vegetables, root vegetables and cabbage predominately. The soup is often eaten with a sour cream garnish and with piroshki, turnovers filed with beef and onions. My mother's borscht was even better than my grandmother's, I would say. Even my grandmother admits that. What you are watching is an Instagram reel from Empowered showing the borscht recipe made by local Ukrainian. As part of the cultural appreciation series, Empowered has also created Instagram recipes with handle at delicious recipes. Please follow our Instagram account as there are animated recipes that you can review in a minute to start cooking. They are all made by locals from their kitchen. All links are below. Please support our efforts to spread the beauty of different cultures. 
I have to tell you a bit more about the monastery Pecherska Lavra. A lavra is a senior monastery while Pecherska means of the caves. The Greeks and Antony founded this lavra in 1051, after orthodoxy was adopted as Kievan Rus' official religion. He and his follower Theodosi progressively dug out a series of catacombs where they and other reclusive monks worshipped, studied and lived. The story is when they died, their bodies were naturally preserved without embalming by the cave's cool temperature and dry atmosphere. The mummies survive even today, giving confirmation for believers that these were true holy men. Now the bell tower has a library, a massive chiming clock and three original bells on display. Baroque architecture originated in the 17th century. Its interior design included highly decorated walls, moldings, sculpted wood mirrors, painted ceilings, crystal candeliers and gilded finishes. Back to our story, since the dog is assumed dead, we have to say something about the funeral rituals of Ukraine. According to the Orthodox services that many Ukrainians use for their funerals, people believe that the soul stays near the body for three days following the death. Family members and friends come to say their final goodbyes alongside an open casket on these three special days. There are many other traditions, but we will look at the next video to see whatever we need to discuss much about the dog's death. Hope you enjoyed the virtual trip to the Ukraine. I invite you to visit our glorious Ukraine and enjoy the most delicious Ukrainian dishes. Please join me on the next video of the series. If you have not seen the first, please do. Let's visit a Ukrainian home. There lived a dame with her dog and a cat. The cat was mild and loved. The dog was charming, naughty and very talented. This is the story that all of your mind already know as old mother Hubbard and her dog. The original story is said to have been set in England and was one of the most popular publications of the 19th century. Let's turn it around and make it a Ukrainian story. In this video, we will look at a Petrikivka painting, a flower of Ukraine, Ukrainian carpentry and the beautiful Kenpetrian region of Ukraine. The main story is illustrated in detail by Alena Tarasova, based in Mykolaiv, Ukraine. And I am Victoria Romanishina, here to tell you about my beautiful Ukraine. Today's Petrikivka is on cranberries, Zhuravlina is how we say cranberries in Ukraine. Cranberries grow in Ukraine and are even exported. Zhuravlinyuk is an old Ukrainian cranberry dessert. It is rather simple, made with cranberries, sugar, semolina and water. In many ways it is a semolina and sugar cooked in a cranberry juice. It is better to make fresh juice from cranberries. The flower for today is in flower. We will talk about them throughout the video. The picture Alona is illustrating show how the mother went to the carpetes to buy the dog a coffin. But when she came back, the naughty dog was laughing. I'm sure mother Hubbard was relieved and happy at the sight, but if I were her, I would be angry too. Earlier, mother Hubbard must have been heartbroken, thinks she lost her best friend. Since grandmother has been living alone, Dobrovka has become her best friend and protector. Let's try to learn how to pronounce the world dog in Ukrainian. Sobaka. Once again, Sobaka. Wonderful. Well done. 
I am sure that Brovko is definitely smiling now, because he is very pleased that he is being talked about in different parts of the world. A true friend is someone who is always there at the right time, who supports you in bad times and knows how to rejoice with you in happy moments. My grandma used to say, a good friend is hard to find and easy to lose, therefore take care of them if you have already found one. Dogs feel everything. Every time the grandmother returns home, she is happy to see Brovko. Brovko's happy eyes always seem to wait to see mother. Maybe because he was bored or maybe because he hopes to get something tasty. And when grandma is sad, Brovko licks her hand or cheek. And his eyes seem to say, don't be sad, I am with you. As you know, dogs like to sleep next to you in bed and are always looking for something to eat. His favorite spot at my grandmother's house is near the stove. When I was little, I used to stay right there competing for attention from grandma. The flower of this video is sunflower. It is the national flower of Ukraine. It is Sonyashniki in Ukrainian. It is grown on the central and eastern steppes since the middle of the 18th century. It is cultivated for its seeds, which are eaten as a snack. It is crushed into oil a key ingredient in cooking and an export product of vital importance. Ukraine is the world's biggest exporter of sunflower oil. Over the last decade, Ukraine has exported 45-55% of the global supply of sunflower oil. The sunflower with the vase was drawn by artists who you are familiar with through earlier videos, Dunja Dayanovi of Serbia. I am always impressed by her paintings. I want to know tell you about Ukrainian carpentry. During my grandmother's youth, they say the art of many Ukrainian carpenters reached true virtuosity. Much attention was paid to the decoration of products with wooden crosses, flowers and other patterns. Carpenters were especially detailed with the ornamentation of chests, which were intended for storing valuables and stood in respectable place in the house. Grandparents' house had a lot of woodwork on benches, tables, window frames, chairs, floor and chest. And the smell of wood inside the house was extraordinary. If one day you come to the Ukrainian Carpathians, be sure to stay in wooden houses. Everyone sleeps extremely well there. The Carpathians are the biggest mountain range in Ukraine with incredible mountain lakes, fresh air of the dense pine forests and adorable alpine villages. The Carpathian mountains spread through seven European countries. They are the most biologically diverse land region in Europe. The Ukrainian Carpathians, called Karpaty, are 11% uh, of the range. Carpathian region is extremely rich in traditional and folklore. Every year lots of festivals are held uh, like Milk River Festival, folk celebration of the spring Metihor, the festival of honey and wine, the festival of fairy art and many others. Western Ukraine has several castles, forests and monasteries too. It is a must visit if you come to Ukraine. And you should try Carpathian cuisine. I would say the natural products add much flavor. The main ingredients of the Carpathian cuisine are wet and corn flour, potatoes, mushrooms, pork or beef and fish. It is famous for an adorable of homemade smoked meat food too. Hutsuls is a name for Ukrainian pastoral highlanders inhabiting the Hutsul region in the Carpathian mountains. The Hutsul folk tradition is rich in folk songs. The Hutsul's rich folklore and folk ways and the Hutsul dialect have been preserved to even now. Their instrumental music, for example, is very rhythmic. The most popular Hutsul folk dances are the fast-paced Hutsulka and around Rahinf, the Trebushanka. 
The Hutsuls are renowned for their artistic wood uh, carving and inlaying of wooden objects with constructing wood, brass, silver, down, mother of pearl and glass uh, beads, their ceramics, their handmade jewelry, ornaments and implements of brass, leather and bone, their vibrant handwoven textiles and kilim weaving, and particularly their embroidery, eastern eggs and distinctive wooden folk architecture. All to the video you have been hearing Hutsu folk music. Now I will sing for you a popular Ukrainian lullaby. Before that, let me tell you the English translation of it. The dream passes by the window and sleep by the fence. The dream asks sleep, where should we rest tonight? Where the cottage is warm, the tot is tiny, there we will go and rock the child to sleep. There we will sleep and will sing to the child, sleep, sleep my little falcon, sleep, sleep my little dove. Since the paintings is done, we can reveal today's guest artists. She is a 3D artist from Philippines. She took the creation you see from Alona and made it real for us. You will see this thought out the cultural appreciation series. We use technology like 3D and animation. It is used to highlight the cultural assets of humanity. For this, the expert need to be an artisan and the technology expert. Many technology experts, as you know, do not dwell into art. But such dual experts are fast growing. As you might think, and uh, I did too, these are only done by big companies. Disney has made much of this commonplace, but it is a big deal for one of two person operations to create such artwork. The encouraging part of having such experts is that over time more and more tools will be available commonly for all of us to create ourselves realistic 3D animations if we want. Currently it is quite involved and takes much computer resources and time. The artist's computer crashed so many times she almost gave up, but Perseverance won. Let's visit a Ukrainian home. There lived a dame with her dog and a cat. The dog was charming, naughty and very talented. The cat was mild and loved. You might already know this story as old mother Hubbard and her dog. The original story is said to have been set in England and was one of the most popular publications of the 19th century. Let's turn it around and make it a Ukrainian story. In this video, we are creating an immersive ASMR backdrop that transports you straight to Ukraine. Our mountains, our fields, our stirring night, our cities and even feel the taste of our beer. But the star of our show remains the time-lapse video featuring our serious artist Alena Tarasova, as she brings to life a quintessential Ukrainian living room through her art. 
She adds a dash of whimsy to the scene through her playful pet dog and a cat. Their antics make this visual journey even more endearing. The lines of the rhythm for this video goes. She went to the alley house to buy her some beer, but when she came back, the dog sat on a chair. What fun topics! We've got an exciting journey lined up for you, where we'll explore the heart of traditional home, the stow and intriguing beer creating process in Ukraine. As we journey, we'll land in the vibrant city of Lviv, home to the hip bar theater Pravda. But that's not all. We'll also delve into the beautiful world of Petrikivka painting, highlighting everyone's beloved fruit, strawberries. To top it all, I bring you a special gift, a flower I often pick up on my grocery trips, the Genshin a blossom adored in Ukraine. So stay tuned as we embark on his uh, fascinating adventure. There it is, the Petrikivka painting from Alona with strawberries, isn't that gorgeous? Strawberries hold a sweet spot in the heart of Ukrainian's agricultural landscape. These juicy red gems, known locally as Polinitsi, thrive in the fertile Ukrainian soil. The strawberry season, typically in June, is eagerly awaited and its arrival is celebrated with strawberry picking festivals. These delightful berries are a staple in many Ukrainian kitchens, finding their way into various desserts and preserves. Kisil is a traditional Ukrainian dessert made from berries, sugar and thickening agent. My aunt, a seasoned cook of Ukrainian dishes, crafts a remarkable version of this dessert using strawberries and potato stretch, resulting in a thick, satisfyingly sweet dish. She, being, uh, she begins by boiling the strawberries with sugar until they form a thick syrup. The mixture is stirred continuously to prevent lumps from forming. The potato stretch is then dissolved in a separate bowl of water before being gradually added to the boiling strawberry mixture. Once the kisil has thickened to her licking, she removes it from the heat and allows it to cool. The dish is then served in individual bowls or glasses, each portion crowned with a dollop of whipped sour cream. Uh, despite my numerous attempts to reply kite her kisil, mine never tastes quite as uh, exquisite uh, as hers. I can't help but think she is uh, within holding a secret ingredient. Gentian is a gorgeous flower found in various regions of Ukraine. Its vibrant blue or purple hues add a mysticism to the landscape, thriving in the cool and moist environment of the Carpathian Mountains. Gentian's trumpet-shaped blooms and stands tall, attracting attention and pollinators. Ukrainians admire gentian for its aesthetic appeal and value it in traditional herbal medicine, as a symbol of uh, resilience and natural beauty. Gentian represents Ukrainians' rich botanical heritage and the harmony between nature and culture. And the picture gets clearer. I will watch the naughty dog Broko with you. He is sure into uh, mischief. How wonderful it is when a cheerful and friendly atmosphere reigns at home. You always want to return to such a place either from the store, from work or from a walk. This interesting picture is the grandmother returning home to see how her pets managed the house without her. It is a funny picture. The dog Brovko climbed it on the grandmother's chair and uh, seemed to declare himself the boss. Grandpa uh, forbids uh, such uh, mischief, but it is quite difficult to refrain from laughing when you see such a performance. The stove in the Ukrainian house has always occupied a vital place. In traditional Ukrainian homes, the fireplace often serves as a heating source and stove for cooking. This fireplace is known as Pechka, very standard in rural areas and older Ukrainian homes. It turns out to be the center of every house. Here we prepare food, make hot drinks and bake bread. It is where pets sleep and everyone warms up. Around the fireplace, the grandparents often put their grandchildren to bed, telling interesting stories from life and fairy tales. Grandma also dries corn, garlic, onions, red papers and other food by the stove. 
The pechka is a large masonry structure typically built against and other wall of the house. It consists of a firebox for burning wood of other fuel, a system of toys and channels and large heated surface made of clay or brick. The surface of the pechka acted as a stove top for cooking and pots and pans can be placed directly on it. The pechka was designed to retain and distribute heat efficiently throughout the home. A fire would heat it and the warm air would circulate through the flues and channels, gradually warming different areas of the house. People often slept or rested near their pechka to benefit from its warmth during cold Ukrainian winters. In the days of my grandmother's years, a fascinated Ukrainian custom prevailed where the stove held a revered place within the household. With utmost respect, a bride would bow to the front corner of the house, the threshold, the stove and the icons. It was a well-known ritual known as knocking on the stove, a symbolic act seeking permission from the house to enter marriage. At the bedroom, girl's fingertips taped against the stove, traces of her father's home's warmth and her mother's love were said to accompany her into the groom's household. The Ukrainian stoves were objects of remarkable beauty through works of art. Each owner took great pride in adorning their stove in the most exclusive manner they called. White washed, decorated with hand paintings with many times intricate carvings represent the refined aesthetic taste of the Ukrainian people. Such was the reverence for the stoves that spitting into the fire of uh, uttering profanities in their presence was strictly uh, for deep and a sign of utmost respect for the sacred arms they provided. But before we dive into the intriguing world of Pravda, let's take a closer look at the art of beer crafting in Ukraine. In the expensive golden files of Ukraine, the brewing tradition took a root as a reflection of the country's uh, abundance and camaraderie. Uh, initially a home-based operation, families brought their own beer using barley, water and touch of pride. As time progressed, commercial breweries emerged with Lviv, becoming uh, the cradle of the Ukrainian beer industry in the 18th century. The 19th century brought new techniques and styles influenced by German and Austrian traditions with lagers and pilsners gaining popularity among Ukrainians. Uh, despite challenges during the uh, 20th century, under Soviet control, Ukraine regarded brewing independence after the fall of the Iron Curtain. The 1990s uh, witnessed a resurgence with the revival of old breweries and the introduction of modern technology through foreign investments. Today, Ukraine's uh, beer industry thrives with large-scale breweries producing popular lagers. It is accompanied by a vibrant craft beer scene, the embraces experimentation and the revival of traditional recipes. It is a testament to the people's passion and resilience in preserving this uh, centuries-old traditional. In Ukrainian pubs, the beer industry is not just about the beverage itself, but also about the spirit of the people and their dedication to upholding the tradition uh, despite advertises. It is a celebration of their rich history and cultural heritage. So the next time you raise a glass in Ukrainian pub, take a moment to appreciate the long and storied history of Ukrainian beer and immerse yourself in the centuries-old Brevin culture that continues to uh, thrive. To this day, when we visit our grandmother, we gather as a family around the stove and share interesting stories. Grandma tells us about village life and we on the country, about city life over a glass of good wine or beer. Grandma is always surprised when she hears about the scale of life in the city. On my last visit, I told her about the three-story beer theater called Pravda. 
Pravda, Beer Theater in the heart of Rhinox Square is not just a restaurant but a activating theater of flavors focusing on the art of growing real beer. The vision behind Pravda is to bring a diverse world of beer to Ukraine, offering a wide selection of brews ranging from classics to exclusive. Step inside the loft style interior and immerse yourself in the brewery ambience and chancing the authentic beer tasting experience. Pravda aspires to create beers that seamlessly blend inter internationally renowned styles with Ukrainian themes, adding a unique twist to their brews. Complementing the exceptional beer offering Prav the Beer, theater's vibrant live music scene adds to the energetic and lively atmosphere. From acoustic sets to energetic bands, talented musicians take the stage uh, throughout the weeks, leaning with a, a diverse range of musical genres to suit different tastes. Uh, whether indulging in their craft beers, savoring their uh, delectable cuisine or immersing yourself in live music. Pravda offers a truly memorable experience showcasing the best Ukrainian culture and gastronomy. Grandma's birthday is just around the corner and she eagerly anticipates another captivating story from me. If I also arrive with a bottle of Lviv beer, I will solidify my position as her beloved granddaughter. So, let's wish my grandma a heartfelt Happy birthday in Ukrainian. З днем народження, бабусю. With that, I take my leave for now. До зустрічі незабаром. This phrase means see you soon in Ukrainian and we'll meet again in the next video.